Uh, yes, sir. There's a question on the homework that asked uh, which of the curves would have more uh, uh, higher acceleration. Is it Right. In this problem, um, and you'll see it when you look at the, the actual problem statement on the D2L side, it only asks for the direction of the acceleration, not the magnitude. The velocity vectors were supposed to be drawn to scale, but the acceleration vector is just the direction. And uh, unless you're going at cruise control at 30 miles an hour around the whole path, you really can't compare uh, yet, in a couple of weeks you will be able to, but right now we can't compare which turn is going to have the biggest acceleration if they're not going the same speed at those two turns. Okay? Good question. Thank you for asking. Let's look at this problem, which uh, doesn't look like what you had in your book. Uh, originally, it was written this way, and it was Steve Iger that was uh, being chased by the bear. And the problem with this question was that, well, everyone knew that Steve Iger was going to have to die in every exam. And so when we asked the question, does he make it, some people on the exam just said, well, no, it's Steve Iger. <laughs> they didn't do any math, any calculations. They said, of course not. <laughs> Why would he? <laughs> so anyway, when, uh, when Ron Hellings rewrote the book for the national audience, he said, well, uh, no one outside of Bozeman is going to know who Steve Iger is, so we'll change it to a Cub Scout. Uh, Ron didn't know that the guy doesn't make it. And so with the Cub Scout not making it, that just makes it a mean problem. That, I mean, who's going to want to buy that book? And we're going to have to change this before it goes to, to, to print. Okay. Now, Steve leaps with a mighty leap. He leaves the bare side of the canyon at a velocity of 10 meters per second with an angle of 53 degrees. So he leaves at 10 meters per second, and that is 53 degrees, 53 with a 3. Now, we're first asked to, uh, we're first asked to break up that velocity vector into its x part and its y part. Um, the x part would be to the left, and the y part would be up. And if I recognize this as a, oh, that's gone forever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That color is no longer available to us. <laughs> if I recognize this as a three, four, five triangle. Uh, this is 5 times 2, so this is going to be 3 times 2, and this will be 4 times 2. Okay? And then the next part of the question is just, does he make it? Now, this is a projectile motion problem, and so we start with our list. From the moment that Steve leaves his side of the canyon, he's in free fall. And so we have acceleration 9.8, call it 10 meters per second per second down. In our coordinate system, and since he's running to the left, I've chosen to the left as my positive x direction, just to get rid of some minus signs. In that coordinate system, the acceleration is still minus 10 in the y and 0 in the x. I, uh, I break up that initial velocity um, into its components and I put them into the table where they belong. Now because of this zero here, I can also put six meters per second there. And now, and now we're stuck. It looks like we have enough information because I told you, I promised you, if you had one, two, three pieces of information, you were golden. You could, you could solve for the other two. And so if you use those three pieces of information to solve for time, you could put the time here, and then you could solve for the empty spaces over in this list. However, I might have lied to you. Not so much a lie, but I told you almost the truth. Usually, with one exception, 
Knowing three pieces of information in a list is enough to find the others. This is the only exception. When this is zero, these have to be the same value. They're not independent of each other. So if I try to use these three pieces of information to find the time, well, I'd do that like this. V final Y, I'm sorry, V final X is equal to V initial X plus AX delta T. What that tells me is that 6 meters per second is equal to 6 meters per second plus 0. <coughs> because that's 0, I don't get to solve for delta T. And it didn't give me very interesting information. I knew that 6 was 6. I've known that for a while. Okay. Likewise, if I try to solve for delta X, I would use this equation. And you see the problem immediately. Because this is zero, I, I lose all information about delta x, and I get 36 is equal to 36, also a true statement. So here's how you solve these problems. What you do is you set up a wall, a wall of saran wrap. Go down to Costco and get one of those great big Mondo boxes of saran wrap and build a great big wall, okay? And so if this is the, the cliff, you want to build a wall that just runs right along the, the rock and up. And that wall is built very simply by forcing delta x to be 18 meters, okay? By forcing delta x to be 18 meters, you're saying that this person, whether it be a Cub Scout or Steve Iger, has already traveled 18 meters to the left and is somewhere at this wall. And what we want to know is, where is he in the y direction? I mean, if he punches through that that wall right here, if his delta y is, is uh, that, he's going to make it. If he punches through there, he's going to make it. If he punches through there, he's going to barely make it. Now remember, that's my zero, zero right there. That's my starting point. And this was 12 meters down. So that means if I get a delta y of negative 12, He'll just barely make it. Well, let's see what we get, shall we? First off, if every second goes by, this person goes six meters to the left, how many seconds is it going to take to, to get to the wall? Three seconds. So I put three seconds in there. Now I have one, two, three pieces of information. I'm looking for delta y. That makes me final my who cares. I plug in my values. There's my V initial Y. There's my acceleration in the Y direction. There's my time. And what I get is negative 21 meters, which means that Steve Iger ends up there, nine meters below the lip, because he's Steve Iger. Now, in my defense, shortly before we wrote this problem, uh, every cell of my body was turned to ooze by some sort of a process that happened in his uh, physiology class. Okay, so it was fair. Questions on this problem? Could you set it up where uh, you just set delta y equal to negative 12? Yes. Yes, you could set up the, the a horizontal uh, barrier that he passes through. The problem is you'll have to solve a quadratic equation because in the y direction, your acceleration is not zero. And so when I get to, uh, when I'm solving uh, for my time, I'll have to use this equation without a zero there, and, and it becomes messy. It's always simplest mathematically to set up your vertical wall. You could do it both ways if you really like the math. You can solve for z final without using the, and then you just have v final. 
Well, I can't find the V. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying you set this delta y to solve for v final, and then use a different equation to find time. You could. That would be that would be a three-step way. Yeah. My way is a one-step way. No, they both get the right right answer. And you get full credit if you did it that way, and probably bonus points for for being creative. Okay. Okay, let's look at this problem with Rolf Wilson. Rolf is an athlete here in town. He's given us permission to use his name in the book. Uh, what happens in this problem is that Rolf goes off this jump and he comes down with some final velocity. And we want to design this jump so that his final velocity is in the same direction that the hill is going. So in other words, if he comes down with a final velocity like that, we would like the hill to look like that. And we want to know what angle we should make that hill. Now if I look at that final velocity vector, It has a y part that is down and an x part that's to the left. And so what we're looking for is this angle here. And you can see that that angle is given by the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So if I just do these two things here, I'd be done. Well, let's do this problem together. As soon as he leaves the jump, he's in free fall. We need our list, our table. Again, he's moving to the left, so I'm going to call the left positive x direction. The acceleration I put in first, it's negative 10 on the y and 0 on the x. Now. Um, I know that he ends up 30 meters lower than he starts. I'm not saying he travels 30 meters. He travels much further than 30 meters. But in the y direction, he travels down 30 meters. So that would be a negative 30 meters. Now, his initial velocity is 10 meters per second. But I can't put 10 into any of those uh, spaces there because it's not in the x direction and not in the y direction. That 10 is at an angle of 16 degrees. Now I wanted to make it 37 but Rolf said no nah, that's not what I did and so we made it 16 to make him happy. Anyway the x part is going to be equal to 10 meters per second times the cosine of 16 degrees, and that's 9.6 meters per second. The y part of that is going to be 10 meters per second times the sine of 16 degrees, and that's going to be 2.8 meters per second. So I put those in the table. Now because of this zero, I know that this 9.6 is always 9.6. So I put it in again. Now that means I'm halfway done. I know that this is 9.6, and so that means in my answer, I can put 9.6. So all I really need right now is the final y velocity. Well, I have three pieces of information in the y list. Uh, that makes my time, who cares? I solve the equation that doesn't have time in it. I just plug and chug. I get this value. When I take the square root, I have two answers, either a positive or a negative 24.6. He's going down and to the left. The down means <laughs> negative y. 
So I choose the negative 24.6. Now when I go over here, I just label that as 24.6. I don't put the minus sign in because I'm labeling a vector that already gives me the direction. And when I put it into this trig function, I don't put the minus sign either. The trig function, sine, cosine, and tangent, are ratios of the length of different parts of the triangle. Lengths have to be positive. You've never had a table that was negative five meters long, okay? And so when you put your values into your trig functions, you can't put a negative value in there because uh, we're, we're comparing ratios of, of lengths. Questions on this problem? Do you care if we use uh, inverse tangent versus inverse sine? Oh, no. Uh, if, you use, if you use inverse sine, you're going to have to find that hypotenuse. It'll just take one more step. But any, there's, um, as I say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. My daughter has a, a bachelor's degree in biology. She says that's not true. <coughs> just one way. Okay? Okay, it turns out that when we plug into that inverse tangent function, we get about 69 degrees. Okay. Now, we've got two minutes. Watch how quick this is. If we look at that banana problem, <coughs> the banana's in free fall, we set up our list. In this coordinate system, acceleration is minus 10. In this case, you throw the banana at 20 meters per second at 37 degrees. Uh, you've all solved this problem, so I can go through it quickly. If I break up the 20 meters per second, I get 16 in the X and 12 in the Y, okay? And the 16 in the X stays 16 in the X. Now again, this is one of those problems where you have these three pieces of information that are not independent of each other. So what we do is we set up a wall at x equals eight meters. And we ask ourselves, if every second it goes 16 meters to the right, how many seconds to go eight meters to the right? Well, that would be a half a second. And so now, I solve for delta y, given that the time is a half second, and what I get when I solve that is 4.75 meters. If it were five meters, it would just barely make it. Again, this was Steve Iger in the original. He didn't get the banana. He started that. Okay, we'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock in this room, and tomorrow we'll have the exam.